for a long time I had no intent on making an insert arm. I was content with the results I was getting by hand, and saw the realm of imaginative insert installation items to be pretty well fleshed out. But while I was happy with my handheld insert installing, my comments were not. The final nail in the coffin was Stefan of CNC Kitchen reaching out to me to offer one of his threaded tooling sets, which I took as a sign that maybe it was time to reconsider my stance. I could have made one of the many excellent designs out there. However, there were a couple of ideas I wanted to explore myself. Firstly, the concept of one-handed brass insert installing. This idea manifested as what at the time I called an insert gun, something with the ergonomics of a hot glue gun that would allow inserts to be picked up and installed with a single hand. This idea came from my own frustrations with getting good shots of installing inserts with two hands, since it requires me to reach around the camera and makes the process needlessly difficult. The second concept is for a 3D printed workshop torque arm. A torque arm uses a series of arms and linkages to keep a tool at a set angle to the work surface, while allowing a large range of motion. Torque arms are not super common in the home shop, but are used in manufacturing to reduce strain on workers and increase accuracy for jobs like tapping. These two concepts had been in my mind for many years at this point, and it seemed like a good chance to explore both of them. The design process started off pretty slow. I first designed the torque arm itself that went pretty quickly, but got stuck on the base of the arm. I laid out some possible designs, but nothing was really sticking. I instead tried physically sculpting what I had in my mind, and was thrilled with just how immediately this got me the results I wanted. I took a picture, and used it as a canvas to shape the base exactly how I had envisioned it. With that hurdle crossed, I could start the build, which begins, as always, with some printed parts. Appropriately enough, the base starts with some heat set inserts. There are four in the bottom, and there was intended to be another five in the top, if I hadn't got the hole size wrong. As it turns out, these were overkill anyways, so I continued the base with gluing a spacer tube in place. Using four more temporary spacers and bolts, the two halves can be combined with M5 bolts and glue around the seam. I made the parting line more pronounced here, which helps immensely with neat gluing compared to my previous designs. One more bolt is added to the spacer tube to keep out the concrete, and just like that, the base is ready to be filled. Using the protruding bolts to my advantage, I create a guide to help the concrete make its way into the form. I think overall this is the best form I've made. It's neat, has no small cavities, and was very easy to fill. I fill right to the brim and then leave it to set overnight. As a final step before adding the arm, I'm adding an optional felt base underneath. Now with the base done, we can continue building the rest of the arm. This begins with the base turntable, and I'm using the same bearing here as on the ball vise. To this, the first arm can be mounted using a bolt. This first arm and axis setup can then be bolted in place to the base. Next, we prepare axis 2 with two bearings press fit in base. This assembly is then mounted with one M8 bolt to the arm, before being further secured with two lengths of M8 threaded rod. 
With that done, we can prepare the 4 bar linkage to allow vertical movement of the tool. This starts with 3 M8 bolts. These are used to secure the two plates on either side of the axis connector. Using two washers, this can then be mounted to the previous assembly and tightened in place. Next, we prepare the arms themselves. There are two identical arms that each have two bearings press fit in between their two halves. These halves are then further secured with three bolts. Finally, a spacer is added to each side of the bearing and the arm is slid into its position before being tightened in place. An identical set of parts is added to the other end of the arms, making us ready to move onto the third axis. This has two press fit bearings and six press fit nuts. Mount the axis again using washers as spacers. We are now ready to calibrate the 4 bar linkage. You can see clearly that this face is far from square to the work surface. To the end of the arm, mount a 1 2 3 block. Using a second 1 2 3 block, rest the arm so that the blocks lay flat together. While they are in this position, tighten the four arm bolts to lock this into position. This arm is not perfectly precise, but using this method you can at least get decent results. Before removing the 1 2 3 block, it's a good time to mount the springs. Using a M5 bolt and three nuts, the tension of the spring can be adjusted by choosing one of several holes. I'm using the springs off an IKEA lamp, and ideally, you want to aim for the minimum tension needed so that the arm rests in the up position. This can be adjusted at any time, but by leaving the 1 2 3 block on, you can have fun throwing it around. I really like watching this thing move. It has a certain organic quality to it that's quite satisfying. With that done, we can remove the blocks and get on with the gripper itself. The gripper also had a noteworthy design process. Particularly, how I made this handle. After designing the whole gripper bar the mechanism itself, all that was left was the handle. Printing off a temporary plate, I took more plasticine and moulded it onto the side, gripping and squeezing it until I found a position that was comfortable. Mounting this on my scanning tray from the sculpting kit, I 3D scan the resulting form. I clean the data and take it into Blender, where I use the bolt holes like locating pins to align the handle with the CAD data. I then merge and smooth the handle and the frame to create a seamless object. To finish up, I create a form in Fusion of the bolt holes that need to be added, and subtract this from the form in Blender. While perhaps not the most efficient, I have been enjoying this method of merging parametric and mesh data. With those parts also designed, we can begin putting it all together. First, we need to prepare the thin brass flap that holds the insert onto the iron tip. Cleaning this up, I go over to the drill to make a 3mm hole. Using this, the piece is held into a forming tool, which is then pressed together to form the bent shape we need. Finally, I file a V shape into one end to better hold on to the round inserts. I clean off the marker I used and install the brass into its final housing using one M3 bolt. The gripper itself 
starts with our third set of parts for the video. A couple of these parts need more heat set inserts installed. The third axis from earlier is removed from the end of the arm and then combined with the iron holder. From here there's frankly too many parts to try and describe. The build document goes over this in proper detail for those interested. This gripper was interesting to design. The tricky part was working out how the tool head could move vertically as much as it moved horizontally, all within a very small area. Not only figuring out a mechanism that could work, but constraining it to work in a comfortable handheld format was a really enjoyable puzzle to solve. I'm happy with the results, but feel it could be simplified probably made smaller as well. As a final touch, a fan is added to the back of the duct. This is another essential component, as the brass will heat up and melt the plastic if it's not included. With just this fan, the brass can stay in contact with the iron indefinitely, even on its max setting. With that in place, we can finally install the iron itself. The current design is for a TS-100 using the CNC kitchen inserts, but the concept could be adapted further. The top knob adjusts the height of the iron to align it with the inserts, and the side knob is then used to lock it in place. Now with the gripper finished, the arm is ready to test. For my first test, I have this plate with some different holes to test speed and versatility. I'm using my old rubbish inserts since I didn't want to waste my nice new ones, but I was still shocked at how well this worked. I was able to install the 15 inserts in about 2.5 and minutes, and maintained a consistent straightness the whole time. The only issue was some inserts going in too far but this was just because of poor lighting and the fact that I was looking at a camera. My second try with proper lighting went much more smoothly. The inserts were all put in pretty consistently, although a depth stop still seems like it would be a useful upgrade. I've also had a couple of actual parts to test the arm on since making it, and so far the arm has performed quite well. Overall, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. The torque arm is just fine. It's better than handheld, but far from perfect. The gripper, however, I legitimately think is really useful. It significantly increased my speed and accuracy, and I think with some tweaking, it could be made much smaller and easier to build. I also like the accessibility aspect of the tool since it enables another aspect of making to be more accessible to those less abled. Files are in the description. Thank you to my patrons, and to you, as always, for watching.